Showtime synergy. <laughs> Hi guys! Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to another episode of Patreon Hangouts Cartoon Commentary. Today, I'm joined by two very special guests. One of them is one of the Patreon subscribers. It's Eric Lutz. How you doing today, Eric? Great. How you doing, Michael? Excellent. And the other special guest is gorgeous. It's my wife, Luana. Hello. My wife is here because she watched Gem growing up and. Eric, you said that you also watched Gem with your sister growing up? I did, yeah. It was one of her favorites, and uh, Defaulto became one of my favorites. And I watched Gem as well because there was nothing else on at the time. Back in the day in the 80s, it was before things like Netflix or DVDs where you could control what you wanted to watch or YouTube. And you had to watch what was on TV. You were at the mercy of the television programming. And so Jem was on Super Sunday, and I would watch that, waiting for an Inhumanoids short, or um, maybe it would follow up G.I. Joe or Transformers, but um, I didn't mind it, you know? I never really look, looked at it as a girly show, same way as I didn't shy away from She-Ra, because it had that sunbow charm to it. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed Jem. I didn't, you know, My Little Pony wasn't my cup of tea, but... But Jim, I could see some of that Hasbro and Sunbow magic in it. Yeah, I can, I can agree. I think it, it definitely didn't feel like a girly show per se. I think it uh, did a good job with the storytelling, and uh, yeah, it was was fit in well with the rest of them. So we're uh, queued up the first episode of Jim and the Holograms. I got my DVD queued up. Uh, we are in the black right before Jim pops up and goes Jim. So I'm going to give you a countdown as usual, three, two, one, and you're going to press play. So everybody ready? Ready. And here we go. Three, two, one, play. And there's Jem. Uh, there were two different intros for the show. Um, the one that I'm listening to right now, I believe, is the original one. I know they changed it down the road. So I think there are versions of this episode with the new intro to it. So that might cause a little bit of a sync issue, but it's it's really not that big a deal. We we go on tangents so much on this show, we don't actually <laughs> follow the actual action all that much, to be honest. And uh, I, I also wanted to mention, I'm going to throw a picture up here. Uh, my wife went as Jem a couple of years ago for a Halloween party. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she she definitely pulled it off. That's awesome. So this opening shot right here, this to me screams in humanoids. Um, it just kind of looks like that slightly futuristic dark in humanoids look. And I, I believe this is the last time you'll see anything dark in this episode. This It's a very bright episode. Uh, not a lot of shadows used, used but uh, that opening shot, I like it. And uh, you see the holograms piling out. Coming out of the rock and roadster. The Rock and Roadster. Was this a toy? I, I believe it was I a toy, right? I imagine it was. I don't remember. Well, one thing I know, I remember, uh, there's Crocodile Dundee. I don't know if you if you folks <laughs> saw him in the middle. He kind of looked like Crocodile Dundee with a hat and the vest. Um, Dundee did come out after this episode aired, I believe. So I don't know if it is actually Croc, but I always thought that was funny. And um, they're kind of Tarantinoing it here. They're starting at the end and going into a flashback and uh you know for uh what's supposedly a girl show it starts pretty heavy um this young woman has lost her father and we're in a rainy uh depressing cemetery <laughs> yeah kind of impressed two minutes in it's a funeral scene <laughs> yeah yeah and that's what was great about the sunbow shows uh, and this is a Sunbow show that they didn't shy away from tragedy, uh, difficulty. That's how you make strong characters. And then we get a look at Starlight House. Um, another, it's a common element used in, in a lot of movies and TV shows, but I always enjoy it. Uh, when you got the rich orphan whose uh, father, parent, whatever, left him a lot of money, so... Jerica has uh, has this mansion where she takes care of people younger than her, which is cool because she's a young character herself. So she gets to 
play that part of the character, but then she's also kind of a parent to these young younger girls who stay at the mansion. Yeah, it's some interesting uh, detail there, character detail, making her into uh, such an altruistic sort of figure. And we're just taking a look at how what of a dump this place is. It's in need of uh, some upkeep. Love how all of the different characters in this show, they all have different colored hair. <laughs> I, I like <laughs> how they... Purple, that... blue, orange, yellow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an episode of a show with so many people with green hair as this episode right here, as we'll see. I, I like that a couple seconds ago, that girl will go in this place as a dump and she launches herself into the air onto the chair, which explodes. Uh, and she's surprised that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I always just launch myself into chairs. It's no problem. Oh, all the time. So the the way that this does differ from the other boys' Sunbow shows is in the boys' shows, the villains were evil. They were murderous. Um, the villains in Gem, they're mean. <laughs> and they're inconsiderate. <laughs> yeah, I like how this guy is just kind of a slime ball. Yeah, he's a corporate slime. That's about as bad as it gets. Uh, the Inhumanoids uh... want to murder all of humanity. <laughs> the Decepticons <laughs> want to enslave us. Uh, Cobra, they're terrorists. They, you know, want to kill and enslave. But this guy, he wants to be the most powerful uh, recording studio in town. <laughs> I love these intros, too. Calling out everybody by name and order. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get one of the, uh, is it a one minute music video? I, I dig this, that it's a music video. Bam. Right you know, at the start of a, of an episode, I wish it was a little longer, but I know time is precious in these 22 minute animated episodes. Yeah. And if it's only a minute long, then they only have to have like a total of seven words in a song, you know, just mm. <laughs> over and over and over again. You just, you just <laughs> need very a, simple songs. Just need a chorus. And I, I think I like the misfits music better than Gem and the holograms. Although Gem has an amazing voice singing voice uh i just find the misfits more catchy yeah although well, as they, a, they are the misfits their songs are better it's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was true they it's, were <laughs> it's prophetic no i was always kind of surprised that uh, hasbro managed to get away with calling them misfits i i would have thought that glenn danzig and company would have uh, ah, put a stop to that yeah i remember as a kid watching this and thinking they were dirty they're filthy i just i didn't like <laughs> them face paint yeah, like the makeup. Yeah, like the makeup looks filthy. They look, you know, kind of homeless. They look trashy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't mm -hmm. look. They didn't look punk. They looked homeless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're definitely more know. scrappy than the gem and the holograms are more put together looking. And that's one of the first of many people with green hair in this episode. So Jerica, she's been placed in a situation where. It's it's rightfully her money, but uh, you know, in her company, but this usurper has come in. He's kind of an Obadiah Stane type of character from uh, Iron Man. And we're he looks extraordinary, to like uh, David Hasselhoff, actually. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably not a coincidence. Yeah. So we're introduced to the synergy earrings which were uh, an important part of the costume when my wife dressed up, had to have those. Were they yeah. official gem mm -hmm. synergy? No, I think we just found them somewhere. On they were, they're obviously influenced by gem though. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we see synergy here, a character very similar um, common theme in eighties cartoons. You need the kind of mystic or magical mentor figure, um, very sorceress like or light hope uh, from she -Ra. Um, you get synergy in Jem. Uh, Jem, uh, Jem, basically Jerica or Jem's uh, link to her father. Just like a fairy godmother type. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting uh, trope. She the yeah the eyes are a little strange. She's either she looks like she's either blinking or keeping her eyes closed, or she just doesn't have any um, like pupils. Did the and, and did anybody see the live action movie? What was it last year, the year before? Did it carry over any of this? Um, I haven't seen it yet, but mm, yeah. uh, from what I've read about it, um, it seemed as though a lot of diehard fans of the original 
um, didn't think that there was much in common between the two properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and some things don't translate. That's just yeah, the bottom, I mean, bottom line. I mean, look at the GI Joe magical movies. holographic grand uh, fairy grandmother. Uh, I don't think is gonna gonna uh, work too well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's actually I think amazing as many animated and comic book things have translated into live action because you know a lot of things just can't. Uh, GI Joe, in my opinion, hasn't really translated to the you know full potential. Look at all this great tech here. It's so almost like a Tron kind of parallel, like the father's created this cool system that she didn't know anything about. Well, it's <laughs> Tron got it from this, if anything. <laughs> Tron Legacy we're talking about, where um, Jerrica is basically the Sam Flynn character stumbling upon all of this cool secret stuff that her father worked on. So as a Tron fan, uh, or specifically Tron Legacy fan myself, um, you know, I dig this. Yeah. This is definitely on like Tron. And I like the uh, the holographic projection thing. I think Voyager totally ripped this off with the holographic doctor being able oh, to go, yeah. go wherever he wanted to eventually with the portable holographic projector. Mm, the hollow emitter. Yeah, hollow emitter. Now, Lou, when you were watching this as a little girl... Um, do you remember how often you watched it? Like, was it a daily thing or a, every Sunday? Um, <clears throat> I watched it every chance I got. I'm not really sure how often that was, but there was a certain time that my mother was busy doing something and wanted us to watch TV, and it was gem time. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> I remember as a kid, um, I didn't collect the toys but i remember seeing them at the toy store because as i've said on my channel i'd wander toys r us for hours and i remember thinking these dolls don't look anything like the characters on the cartoon now yeah that does look like hasselhoff yeah <laughs> or or mccormick from hardcastle and mccormick <laughs> <laughs> david hugh kelly looked a lot like david hasselhoff yeah. back in the day <laughs> just I think Hoff's hair was a little darker. Yeah, just the addition of the uh, leisure suit. Yeah, yeah. So we get a second music video. And Jem does have a beautiful singing voice. This beautiful. Now, there was something I've read online that the the singer was actually a voice actress and the the um, voice actress was actually a singer. It was kind of a weird, uh, weird switch up. Huh. Like, because there was two people that did the voice. I yeah, know, yeah. And I know that it's two different people. Um, I, yeah, I'd have to look into that. Um, yeah, out of all the girls, like, I remember Jem and Kimber. But the other two didn't seem to be as important. I don't know, I think because Kimber was the young one. She was the one with the drama. She'd always have, yeah. like, issues, problems. The other two were just kind of, you know, good sisters. Mm. And good thing no one's uh, watching what Jem's up to here. I'll just <laughs> hide beside this tree. <laughs> Besi <laughs> There's cameras right there. See, in the 80s, we had honor. You, you didn't spy on, on a girl when she was ducking behind or beside a tree. <laughs> you, you averted your eyes. <laughs> And that's that's one reason I like going back and watching anything 80s related, um, just because it's filled with that early to mid 80s magic. Well, there's such an innocence to these old cartoons as well. You know, the uh, um, there's kind of a purity. You know, they're not uh, they don't feel like you're they're 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 vying for your attention. Um, you know, against a hundred other shows, it was uh, you know there were you know. Yeah. Two or three networks on that would, that would play cartoons on a Saturday, and there wasn't really that much, uh, that many options. Yeah, and we get another cameo from another cartoon. There's Max Ray, brilliant sea operations specialist. <laughs> Maybe not. I just every time I see a uh, mustache on a cartoon, 
Um, but Hector Ramirez does eventually appear in one of these gem oh, episodes. Yeah. He's the big Sunbow crossover character, the news anchor who uh, appeared in Transformers, G.I. Joe, Gem, in Humanoids. They probably tried to figure out a way to get him on Visionaries, <laughs> but they just couldn't because it's a different galaxy. And there's a cliff, literally a cliffhanger. Or it will be after the after the commercial break, it'll be a cliffhanger. So yeah, I was I was saying earlier how no one's evil, no one's murderous, they're just mean, they're jerks. But uh, <laughs> yeah. but there is a life threatening situation that comes up here. Although in Gem, if something's life threatening, it's uh, due to an accident. And we see a little bit of a recap here, just because this is from the Sunday Super Sunday, whatever they were called um, shows, when it was shorts uh, played with other shorts like in humanoids shorts. And, uh, the following week they would have to just do a quick recap of what you saw. So that's why some of these still include a couple seconds of the, what you just saw before the commercial break. That's, I gotta say that's an ugly car. Um, the pink with the, the, the roadster sh- chartreuse. <laughs> Very in fashion in the time, I'm sure. Although we are We're seeing more, bad. We're seeing more chartreuse at the yeah. uh, at the clothing stores lately. Mm-hmm. Made for a great toy, I'm sure. Yeah. And here's this dreamy guy. What's his name? Rico. Rio. Oh, purple hair. That uh, it's it's uh, nice to see some early work from uh, Ezra Bridger <laughs> from uh, from Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> He's before he got a haircut. Yep. Dreamy Rio. He's kind of rocking the mentalist outfit here with the uh, three piece suit (laughs) without the tie. Mm -hmm. So the gem has the, the short pink dress and Shira had the short white dress when I was a little girl I was like I couldn't get my hands on any short dresses <laughs> everything was down to my knees and I always wanted like these short dresses and I could never find anything although you have to hand it to the animators um, I would assume that it was the case with the makers of Gem I know specifically for Shira Lou Scheimer when he was working on Shira he wanted to make absolutely certain that there was never anything that even remotely hinted of an opportunity to, you know, look up Shira's uh, um, skirt. Yeah, he he, he didn't want any of that at all. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a dichotomy of the, you know, slightly revealing outfit, but still there's nothing too revealing. Makes me uh, wonder what he'd think of uh, modern cosplay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the winning is everything song is just so obviously the, you know, the bad point of view. Winning is everything is the bad message. <laughs> well, I, I like how it's driving home how narcissistic they all are. The, the, the trouble with the misfits is they're supposed to be so bad, but their songs are so catchy. Yeah, that was that, always the ironic thing. I wonder how many narcissists they help create. You know, just little girls skipping down the street. Winning is everything. Winning is everything. It's more catchy than the gem song. It backfired. <laughs> Here's Brett the Hitman Hart. Well, he's wearing the Bret Hart sunglasses. That's another cool thing about Gem is you get to see a little bit of 80s fashion in here. This girl yeah, always reminded outfits. me of uh, Jubilee from X-Men for some reason. Just kind of the young young character who's a, a mess up. And here's a little bit of moral lessons. Yep. Sunbo all the 80s shows all had. Yeah, Sunbo wasn't too heavy with that kind of stuff though. They would just do it like they did here. They they drop it. Yeah. They drop a few uh wisdom, you know, lines and then move on with a story. Um it's difficult to do an entire episode all about morals without just seeming too goody goody. I think the best I ever saw it done was Brave Star. Brave Star just hits yeah. the heart cuz every 
episode is about a powerful moral lesson, but it's done so beautifully. It's so genuine. And that's the trick, right? Um, yeah. Being genuine without, you know, the jokes and the bathos and, uh, and you know, trying to roll your eyes at your own stories. Oh, little smooch there. Now, wasn't there something about those moral lessons where, where they added them to where they could, they could say that it was uh, uh, had educational content or something like that to, to get over uh, some sort of FCC rule or something like that? There was some, some detail that they – reason they added a lot of that to these old shows. Yeah, there's – see, there's shows where I believe it, that it's genuine. Like He-Man, Brave Star, mm-hmm. She-Ra, this. I, I believe that they're trying to actually um, mm-hmm. and, you know, give you a, a – a genuine good lesson, how to be a good person in life. Other shows, Silverhawks would add those little phony baloney things at the very end or G- yeah. I love GI Joe, but the little PSAs at the end of GI Joe were just so tacked on like there, mm. we did some good. If, if your house is on fire, <laughs> get out of it. Like literally barbecue showing up saying, get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. And that's, <laughs> And that's how this episode ends. Um, I don't know how it is on the other versions of this episode, but the DVD that we have, um, it continues with (laughs) what's like three and a half minutes, maybe four minutes of preview of what you're going to see. I don't know if it's the next episode or the next several episodes, but the house is on fire. It's a dangerous situation. And, you know, they don't want to, stress kids out like these girls are going to be okay and so they show you everything is going to be okay they're alive they're doing other things and lots of other things to the point where when i'm done watching this preview i can't remember what predicament they were in the burning house (laughs) (laughs) well at least we know they all got out of it yeah yeah they're ending it on a little sweeter note there uh, Susan Blue's name. She's in, I think, just about everything Sunbow did, right? Oh, yeah. Got a lot of these actors. Yeah, the voice, oh, of, there's... voice of RC from Transformers. Yeah. I liked how um, Sunbow would share um, voice actors. And they were all so good that you didn't necessarily go, oh, that's Starscream, right? Or that's, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, that's Prowl. They were good enough to, even though the voice still sounded familiar, it was a different character. Like... Michael Bell, for example, does Prowl, Duke, and Augur, three completely different characters. You know, very similar voice, but doesn't sound like the same character to me. Yeah, so many of those actors, like Frank Welker, I mean, he does so many. And I mean, uh, you know, you immediately know him as Megatron, but I mean, he does he does ones, I'm trying to think offhand, oh, that yeah, you don't even Scooby? recognize him. Was he Scooby, oh, that's right. Soundwave, Wheelie? He's the yeah. goat. He's the goat. Greatest of all time. Frank. Yeah. Walker. And uh, Jim, more than the other Sunbow shows, was the Ritzy show. It was the one with glamour and glitter, fashion and fame. Just like the theme song said, you know, it was the one with the nice dresses, the tuxedos, the yachts. Uh, G.I. Joe might have had a one off with a yacht, you know, with Flint in a tux. But Jim was the really classy one. And uh, judging by how classy my wife is, uh, you know, at least for one girl, I think this show helped create a classy lady. Thanks. I'm just glad she didn't uh, prefer the misfits. (laughs) No green hair? (laughs) High fight. (laughs) There's the hydrofoil. It's too bad there wasn't more crossover. Uh, I know with Jem, why would you have crossover with Transformers or G.I. Joe? Like, that could have been a Cobra Hydrofoil. Um, there was one <laughs> crossover where uh, one, of the te- <coughs> one of the television sets showed an Inhumanoid attack in Jem. Oh, so, so interesting. There, yeah, there's a bunch of TV sets, I think, and you can see it was either Tendril or Decompose trashing something. So it was because both shows were on Super Sunday, the Sunday show. Um all together here sunbow doing the uh the shared universe before it was a big thing i guess yeah yeah and it uh you know it's not like um like marvel did it all the time and they never thought anything of it right Uh, somewhere along the way shared universe became this huge thing that every movie studio tv 
station. They're trying to, to do the shared universe, but Marvel, I just remember Spidey showing up in everything and it wasn't a big deal, right? It's just crossover, right? That's what you do. Yeah. But then in the eighties, it got sticky because of all the rights. We can't have that, you know, who's going to get the money. And then they just decided, forget it. So that is the first episode of Gem and the Holograms. The show All actually right. like holds up fairly well compared to some other um, 80s TV shows. Still watchable. <laughs> yeah, there's, there, there, there's a lot of cartoons out there. And, uh, you know, I'm a cartoon, 80s cartoon aficionado. And there's cartoons I want to love. Like Silverhawks, I want to love it. He-Man, I want to love it, the original. And Silverhawks is difficult. Like, it's, it's just... You know, there's parts of it that look good, but it just doesn't, the writing's not there. Yeah, uh, um, I have to confess, I don't think I've seen that show in probably 20 years. Yeah. I, don't think I've, I don't think I've seen it since it was actually on the first time. And like the, the trouble with Silverhawks is it's the, it's the sister or the brother show to Thundercats, right? Same studio, mm -hmm. same voice actors, same writing team. Um, and I watch Thundercats and I love it. And so I pop in Silverhawks and I go, what's the problem here? This is supposed to be more of the same, just like G.I. Joe and Transformers. They're very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Similar in quality. So I think with Gem, because it is a Sunbow show, that it's still got, you know, that behind the scenes quality control that, you know, we need certain elements to keep this story going. It, uh, you know, like another show that I could throw out there as not being that good uh, over time is Centurions. I feel like every time I put in a Centurion episode, I'm done after five minutes. After five minutes, it just keeps repeating itself and repeating itself. Um, but this story, it you know, it jammed a lot into just 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. We find it, out yeah. who Erica is, and you know, her father's gone, and she's got the secret identity. We didn't even get into that in this commentary. Uh, that common thing from the '80s of the secret identity. And uh, a lot of people connect with that. They relate to it because in your real life, I don't know how many people out there have tried to make a change in their life, um, whether it's like a physical change, either getting into shape or changing your fashion or your hairstyle or, or your job or something, making a big change. And unfortunately, there's a lot of pushback to that. People don't want other people to change because it's, it's out of their comfort zone. Like, hey, you know, I, I like what's familiar. You know, I don't want to change, don't you change. So a great way around that is to just come up with this split personality, this alternate persona, like He-Man, like Jem, you know, like She-Ra. Mm. So that's another thing that connects with me in this show is you've got this young girl, Jerrica, who she couldn't do all the stuff that she does as Gem. She needs this uh, alter ego with the pink hair and, you know, the high heels and the pink dress uh, while she gets to still be the regular kind of everyday girl next door, Jerrica. You know, it's interesting, too. You know, you see that that's a pretty powerful trope. Um, you know, I'd call it kind of the Harry Potter syndrome of somebody finding out that there's more to them and there's this whole other dimension and things they didn't know about and you know these these powers or abilities or or, or you know this is kind of a gateway into this new identity i think that that really resonates with a lot of people i'm sure mm -hmm. and and just for gem specifically i appreciate that it's not a show about the world being at risk it's nice to just watch a show for change that's about singing the music industry um friends you know, there, it's, it's it, this is a lot like Friends, like the show, TV show sitcom Friends. You know, it's Gem and the Holograms, and they're dealing with life in addition to their careers. And it's just nice for once to not watch bullets or lasers flying and planets exploding <laughs> and, you know, like maniacal uh, people trying to, to rule the world. It's, it's a nice break. Yeah, it does. It feels, uh, I, I would say, somewhat grown up compared to, uh, you know, something like G.I. Joe or Transformers, which is, you know, pure fantasy or science fiction or whatever. It's uh, it, it feels a little more adult. I have to think that that had to have been part of the uh, appeal. Yeah. 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 So, Eric, I'd like to thank you for giving this suggestion. This was your recommendation and uh, I liked it. I'm actually interested in seeing what happens next with Jem. 
<laughs> how they what was what was the cliffhanger again <laughs> we, the fire oh the fire the fire get out get out yeah, we know they'll be okay but i want to see how they, they get out of it yeah, so. well great well well i'm uh, i'm glad you liked it and uh, thanks for uh, having me a part of uh, be a part of your show this was a lot of fun absolutely and I, I think we're gonna have to do another one of these and hopefully we'll be able to get christy marks on the show as well Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's great. You'll really like her. So Get to chat with her a little bit about Gem as well as all of the other amazing shows she's written for. I, w I went through her IMDb list and I just went, wow, wow, wow. Like just show after show um, that she contributed to that uh, I grew up on or, you know, even in the 90s and beyond. Uh, just a very, very talented lady. Looking forward to chatting with her. too. Yeah, she's really nice. Great. So, uh, Luana, thank you very much for joining us for the Gem Commentary. It was fun. Thank you. And Eric, again, thank you very much for joining us, and thanks for uh, supporting on Patreon. I had a great time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And if you are interested, folks, uh, in supporting the Patreon, uh, head over to www.patreon.com slash michaelmercy. All sorts of rewards there for Patreon supporters. You can request videos, you can get uh, early access a, a day in advance, see them before anybody else sees them. And lots of cool stuff coming up, lots more vintage toy reviews or new toys that are homages to uh, beloved favorites. Lots more coming up on the channel. Thanks everybody for watching, for commenting, for liking, for sharing, and for subscribing. Love y'all, and until next time, Third Mistake.